Today is New Brunswick Day and we are celebrating New Brunswick's birthday. New Brunswick is the province in which I live in. And we've also got some uh, a special vehicle review coming up. So stay tuned. All right guys, here is the point in the program where I want to share with you a very special vehicle. I call it special because it has such mixed reviews. This vehicle is kind of the mid-size wagon, kind of in your crossover between, it's not a crossover, but it's kind of a cross between a full-size sedan hatchback versus a small SUV. It would fit right along the lines of a Mazda 5 or a Kia Rondo. So what makes this vehicle so special is because of its unique looks. And one of the big things that I want to stress about this particular video is if you can get your head wrapped around the unique looks of this particular vehicle, you will love the vehicle. And I'll tell you why. But first, let's introduce you to the only second one of these vehicles that we've ever owned at Old Car Auto Sales. This is the 2014 Fiat 500L Trekking Edition. As you can see, this is not the most beautiful pumpkin in the patch. However, if you know the story about the ugly duckling, now we won't go there because I don't really know it either. But nevertheless, this vehicle has everything a growing family would ever need in a vehicle. It's a four cylinder 1.4 turbocharged engine, the same engine you'll find in the Dodge Dart. It also seats five very comfortably. And in a minute, I'm going to show you some of the neat features from the inside of the vehicle that even myself, six foot two, can find very appealing. So let's go inside and we'll take a look. Convert 36 degrees Celsius to Fahrenheit. 36 degrees Celsius equals 96.8 degrees Fahrenheit. It's a warm one, folks. So for the remainder of this review, I am going to run with the AC on. 
Last time we were out here in the field, it was the bugs. Today, it's the heat. Makeup. One of the first things that I want to point out in this Fiat 500L is the amount of sheer visibility that you have from the driver's seat. Now, in the quick little rotation 360 that you got on this video, you'll see that there is just windows everywhere. And even in the back, there's huge amounts of visibility. And for those who like to star gaze, probably one of the biggest panoramic roofs I've seen in a car. As I said before, being six foot two, my biggest problem with getting into smaller vehicles is fitting and fitting comfortably. This particular one uh, fits just fine. And they're fairly comfortable as far as the actual amount of cushion that's on these chairs. As you can see, I've got plenty of headroom. And as far as leg room, I've got the seat back as far as it'll go. And I've got all kinds of leg room. Speaking of leg room, if you are fortunate enough to have to sit in the back seat of one of these Fiat 500Ls, there is all kinds of leg room. Now I can put my legs together and still not touch the back of the chair. And this chair is set all the way back from where I would normally drive. Probably about my only complaint from back here is this headroom. Now granted, not everybody wears their hair as tall as I do and probably aren't as tall as I am, but I do find that if I'm up here, I can rub my hair on the headliner. But I digress, I'm not gonna be sitting in the back seat of this thing anyway. So again, in this particular vehicle, this vehicle is white. You'll notice all the white accents on the inside of the interior. I find it to be just enough to let you know, A, that you're driving a white vehicle, but it's also just enough to break up the drab grays of your typical interior. This particular model as well, being the trekking, you're also gonna get the two-tone interior as far as the door panel here and in the seats. It also does offer quite a few standard features like steering wheel controls for your Bluetooth, satellite radio, as well as the controls are very easy to use and easy to read. They're very direct. You can hear the clicking, you can feel the clicking, and it takes a lot of guesswork out of some of these modern ones where you actually have to try and look at it and figure out what it is you want to do with the AC system. It has all kinds of storage. You get two cup holders up here and a 12 volt plug in as well as a little spot to put your phone. Granted, I have a Samsung Galaxy S8, one of the largest phones on the market, and it just wants to kind of fall out of that space. But there's all kinds of room there. There is a little storage compartment there as well as your glove box down there. Each door does offer side pockets, even in the rear so that everybody has a place to put some drinks. We go back to talking about storage and there is plenty of storage. There's two tiered storage here in the back. This tray will remove and the seats will fold forward, basically doubling the amount of storage space you have in this vehicle. And it's very comparable to a smaller SUV. Now we're gonna take you a little bit of a test drive to see how this 1.4 turbo works in such a big vehicle. They do work very well in the Dodge Dart, but we'll see how it handles with the extra weight of this 500L. So at the beginning of this video, I mentioned one of the biggest things that people need to get used to when thinking about the 500L is its looks. That's not entirely true. The second thing that you really need to get used to with this vehicle is the automated dual clutch transmission. A lot of people aren't used to driving an automated dual clutch. And the way it works is basically like a standard transmission where you feel the clutch engage and when it shifts, it's doing the same thing. Granted, it's all automatic and all you have to do is hit the brake and the gas, there is no clutch. It's, you still have the sensation that you're driving a manual, uh, a manual shift transmission. It does take a little bit of getting used to. I admit when we had the first one, um, it was different and you really gotta learn how to drive it. I wouldn't say learn, you really do have to get used to the different feel of what it is. So for instance, if I take my foot off the brake right now, I roll back just ever so slightly as that clutch engages, and as soon as I hit the brake again, the clutch will disengage. If you are prone to take your foot off the gas, to take your foot off the brake, and just smash the gas, that is where you're gonna feel it the most. 
because there can be a little bit of a delay. So we're getting ready to pull out in the traffic here right now. You probably aren't going to be able to notice that sensation on the camera, but I sure do. Now granted, the vehicle does shift very smooth and the, like I said before, the visibility in this thing is phenomenal. Uh, there's lots of light that comes in here. In fact, uh, unless you have a Fiat 500 with tinted windows, you're going to find that those windows will let in an awful lot of sunlight. This one does have the tinted windows. It also has the sunshade above to help keep that sun from beating in on you. It is a hot day today here in St. Stephen. And one of the things that you want to be able to do is to hop in a vehicle, crank that AC, and have it come on almost instantly. This particular vehicle, it does that. One thing you got to keep in mind is that if you're going to be parking it for any amount of time, keep that sunshade closed. Now, one thing I do find a little bit different between this and a Dodge Dart with that 1.4 turbo is the definite weight disadvantage that this vehicle has. So even though when I pulled out into traffic, I did step on it and it revved up, you could hear the engine working and it got to where it was going very quickly, but at almost a 700 pound weight disadvantage to, compared to the Dodge Dart, it's definitely uh, a different feel for that engine. I have never been big on these odd looking cars. And even when we had the first one, I really wasn't big, but when I first hopped in it to drive it, I don't want to say I fell in love, but I was pleasantly surprised. It worked really, really well. And, you know, the power was okay. The room is spacious. The visibility, as I keep saying, is phenomenal. And it's comfortable to drive. The handling is very responsive. I mean, granted, we're not on any twisty, windy roads, but I can... You know, I can come on to it pretty good at speeds of 100 kilometers an hour, and you'd never know you were going that fast. Cruise control is very easy to engage. Just two simple buttons, hit the power, hit the set, and away you go. And like most Chrysler Jeep Fiat products, you have the radio controls for volume and tuning your stations on the back of the steering wheel. So my whole point on this particular video is not just to review such an odd looking car, but also to raise awareness of the possibilities of a growing family's needs when they're looking for a new vehicle. This vehicle should be very good on fuel. I will look up the government rating on the fuel economy and I will put that right here for you to take a look at. This vehicle, this particular vehicle, has 43,000 kilometers on it, which if I do my math, or check Google, Google will probably tell me it's somewhere around 27,000 miles. So for 2014, it is super low mileage, and you can tell the previous owners really cared for it. When we bought it, we didn't have to do much to the interior to clean it up, uh, other than a little bit of clear coat peeling on the wheels. The exterior is virtually blemish free. At a price tag of $13,995, as long as we don't have to spend a pile of money on it, and I don't think that we do because it runs smooth, there's no squeaks, there's no rattles, the brakes feel good, and obviously it's clean. So we'll check over the brakes, we'll check the oil change, we'll check all that stuff before we get it on the lot. And if you're interested, you know how to get a hold of me. My contact information is in the description below. So guys, if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. In the comments section below, I want to know what your thoughts are on this 2014 Fiat 500L. Tell me what you think. Tell me whether you would own one. If you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, I encourage you to do so now because you're going to see a lot more of this type of video as well as everyday runnings of my business at Old Car Auto and once in a while you even get some shenanigans. So stay tuned, hit that subscribe button, and we will see you in the next video. And don't forget, always be focused on the windshield and not in the rearview mirror. Have fun guys, and we'll see you in the next video.